Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about triangle inequality proofs. We're basically going to look at three different proofs involving triangle inequalities. So let's get started with the first proof. We're given triangle ACD as shown in the figure. We also know that the length of segment CB is equal to the length of segment CA. How do we prove that the length of segment CD is greater than the length of segment CA? Again, we want to start by setting up a statement reason table and add the first two givens. How can we use the givens? Well, if we look at the diagram, we know that the length of segment CB is equal to the length of segment CA. What can we deduce from that? Well, we know that triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle and the base angles are congruent. Therefore, measure of angle CAB is equal to the measure of angle CBA, because if two sides of a triangle are equal in measure, then the angles opposite those sides are equal in measure. Notice that here I'm not using congruence at all because we want to stick with measure notation for inequalities. Well, what else can we say here? that will lead us to the proof. Let's look at angle CBA. What is the relationship of angle CBA to triangle CBD? Well, we know that angle CBA is the exterior angle of triangle CBD. And therefore, the exterior angle has to be greater than either remote interior angles. So in this particular case, we know that angle CBA must be greater than angle BDC. So let's write that in the statement reason table. Okay, so here we have measure of angle CBA greater than measure of angle BDA because the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angles. Okay, so if we look at step three and four, what can we do at this point? Well, we can apply the substitution postulate of inequality to state that the measure of angle CAB is greater than the measure of angle BDA. Now, what do we notice here? Well, if we look at triangle ACD, we know that angle CAB is greater in measure than angle BDA. The side opposite of measure of angle CAB is segment CD, and the opposite of angle BDA is segment AC. Notice that here we're focusing just on triangle ACD. Now, what can we say now? Which segment is longer? Well, the one that is opposite the larger angle. In this case, segment CD has to be greater than segment CA. So in the statement reason table, we can then conclude that the length of segment CD must be greater than the length of segment CA. Because if two angles of a triangle are unequal, in measure, then the longer side is opposite the larger angle. Let's Notice look at another example now. Here we have triangle PQR, and we also know that from the given, the length of segment PR is greater than the length of segment RQ. How do we prove that the length of segment PR is greater than the length of segment RS? Again, let's get started setting up a statement reason table. Now, we want to also add the two givens, and then we can think about, okay, what can we deduce from the given? Well, here we know that segment PR is greater than the length of segment RQ. So is there any relationship in terms of angles in that triangle? Well, if we look at these two segments, the angles that are opposite those segments are also in the same relationship. So now we can say that the measure of angle Q is greater than the measure of angle P, as you can see in the diagram as well, because if two sides of a triangle are unequal in measure, then the larger angle is opposite the longer side. So how can we use this information now? Well, our goal is to prove that segment PR is greater than the measure of segment RS. So every time we want to do these types of proofs, it's a good idea to think backwards. For example, if we want to prove that the length of segment PR is greater than the length of segment RS, then what would be the step right before that? Well, 
in this case, we will have to prove that the angle opposite of segment PR, which is angle one, has to be greater than the angle opposite of segment RS, which is angle P. So let's write that down as a side note. So our goal is to prove measure of angle one is greater than measure of angle P, and then prove that segment PR is greater than segment RS in measure. Okay, so at this point, we have that measure of angle Q is greater than measure of angle P. So how do we get measure of angle one in there? Well, let's think about that. What is the relationship between measure of angle one and the entire triangle SQR? We know that measure of angle one is the exterior angle of triangle SQR, and therefore it has to be greater than either remote interior angle in measure. So therefore, since we're dealing with angle Q in step three, we can say that the measure of angle one has to be greater than the measure of angle Q as shown in the diagram. So let's denote that in the statement reason table. So again, measure of angle one is greater than measure of angle Q in step four, because the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angles. Now, what do we notice here? If you look at step three and four, that we can apply the transitive property of inequality. If the measure of angle one is greater than the measure of angle Q and measure of angle Q is greater than measure of angle P, then what is the relationship between measure of angle one and measure of angle P? That measure of angle one must be greater than measure of angle P. And again, for step five, measure of angle one is greater than measure of angle P because of the transitive property of inequality. Notice that we are achieving our goal here as shown on the right side. Now, after this, we can now state that the length of PR is greater than the length of RS. And what's the reason for that? Well, it's a very similar reason than step number three, but it's the converse of that statement. Namely, if two angles of a triangle are unequal in measure, then the longer side is opposite the larger angle. And this is how we complete this proof. Let's now look at a final example. In the diagram shown below, point M is chosen on segment BC such that segment AM is the median of triangle ABC. We want to show that the length of segment AM must be greater than the length of segment AB plus the length of segment AC minus the length of segment BC, everything over two. So how do we show this? Well, the best way to start this proof is to think about the triangle inequalities. For example, let's look at triangle ABM. What must be true in triangle ABM in terms of the triangle inequality theorem that we have learned? Basically, what is the relationship between the three sides? Well, we could pick any three sides. However, it makes more sense to compare segment AM and segment BM, or the sum of those segments with the third segment, which is segment AB, which means that that segment AM plus segment BM the length of those must be greater than the length of segment AB. And basically the theorem that justifies this is in a triangle, the sum of the measure of any two segments is greater than the measure of its third side. And similarly, we can also state that in triangle ACM, the length of segment AM plus the length of segment CM must be greater than the length of segment AC because of the same exact theorem as shown above. Now, what can we do here at this point such that it will lead us to what we want to prove here? Well, here we have two inequalities and we can just simply add them up. So let's try and see what happens. So if we add up both inequalities, we end up with 2AM plus BM plus CM must be greater than AB plus AC. Notice that if we look at BM and CM, those are both part of the entire segment BC. So basically BM plus CM is equal to BC. So let's rewrite it. 
Here we have 2AM plus BC must be greater than AB plus AC. Now we want to isolate AM. So let's subtract BC on both sides. And here we obtain that 2AM is greater than AB plus AC minus BC. And finally, we can divide 2 on both sides. And if we divide 2 on both sides, we obtain that AM must be greater than AB plus AC minus BC, the entire quantity over 2. And we have therefore shown that this must be always true. So that's basically it for today's lesson. Again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.